The solar system we live in is a perfectly balanced cosmic machine, and every planet in this gravitationally stable system plays a significant role in keeping things that way. Think of the planet as being imbalanced with each other. Their orbits locked in an intricate but delicate dance. But what would happen if an interstellar object, such as an actual shooting star would accrue by our solar neighborhood and alter the orbit of just one planet? Get ready to see what would happen to the Earth and the solar system if a passing star changed the orbit of Neptune. Learn about the giant cosmic objects headed straight for our solar system and the destruction they could cause. Researchers are always studying the solar system and creating models with different scenarios, such as what would happen to the solar system if a planet was suddenly removed, or more likely what would happen if a huge interstellar object such as a passing star entered the solar system. Even if it didn't collide directly with one of the planets, it would cause more problems than you can imagine. The motion of the planets in our solar system is chaotic by nature. This means that even the smallest difference in initial conditions of the system, such as a change in orbit of one of the planets would result in dramatically different outcomes that would be catastrophic. We're talking differences as small as one part in a trillion. One of those scenarios is recently made headlines and researchers have found that if a passing star comes close enough to icy Neptune and changed its orbit by just 0.1%, chaos would ensue as all the other planets in the solar system would collide with each other, or they would simply fly off into deep space. Some might say the chances of that happening are impossible. However, some researchers suggest that this type of stellar flyby is actually a common occurrence in the universe. If it happened here in our solar system, the likely possible scenario is that if Mercury and Jupiter's perion, which is the point at which the planet's orbits are the closest to the Sun, fall into sync, two things could happen. Mercury could be pulled out of its orbit and shoot out of the solar system, or it could hit the Sun, or it could hit the two other inner planets, Venus and Earth. What keeps Mercury from falling into the Sun now is the planet's high-speed rotation that constantly defies the gravitational pull of the Sun. Researchers wanted to be certain of what could happen and ran the stellar flyby simulation nearly 3,000 times. In 2,000 of those simulations, 26 of them ended up with plan. Smashing into each other or the outer planet, such as Uranus and Neptune being thrown out of the solar system completely. Now, this also means the Earth could collide with these planets, or we could also find our planet floating off into space away from the Sun. The situation would be apocalyptic, either way to put it mildly. If Mercury were to be suddenly flung towards the Earth, there would be nowhere to run or hide. Mercury would become larger and larger in our sky, and everyone would know that bad things were coming. And by the time Mercury reached the orbit of the Moon, those bad things would begin to happen. The gravitational pull of Mercury would make the tides 8 to 10 times higher on Earth than they are now. Coastal cities would see huge floods and mega tsunamis would form and devastate not only coastline cities, but destroy everything far inland in their paths, causing massive flood damage across the entire planet. These huge mountains of water would make the tsunamis that hit Fukushima on March the 11th, 2011 look like tiny waves on the beach. In comparison, fast forward to 28 hours before Mercury was to impact the planet, the Earth and Mercury's gravity would begin to speed up the collision process. Some models indicate that Mercury would be moving at a speed of 60 kilometers per second. Those mega tsunamis would make their way across the oceans along with massive lightning storms and hurricanes and tornadoes would form that would be so large they wouldn't have a number on the category scale. Earthquakes would be so powerful and constant that nothing would be left standing by this time. If you didn't book a space flight off the planet, your time and options will be running out quickly. If you didn't succumb to the massive natural disasters first, if Mercury was anywhere near as hot as it is now, the planet would enter Earth's atmosphere and boil it away along with the seas and oceans. Mercury would completely fill the sky above you. The atmospheres of both planets would compress and create an incredibly hot glow and vaporize everything on the side of the Earth about to get hit. As for the rest of the Earth, the ground would become a sea of molten magma. 
The collision between the two planets would cause so much friction that their rotation would slow down and possibly stop altogether. The Earth spins at about 1,600 kilometers per hour. If the planet suddenly stopped, the momentum would send everything on the surface of the planet flying eastward. Just imagine people, buildings, cars, trees, rocks, everything and more. Being launched sideways at hundreds of kilometers per hour in the aftermath, high-speed winds that are still rotating as fast as the planet before it was stopped would scour the surface of the Earth clean. As Mercury got closer to Earth, trillions of tons of superheated rock would sand a wall of fire in all directions, and the shockwave would engulf the entire planet in under 20 minutes. And while the surface of the Earth would be a fiery molten hell, the planet's inner core would melt from the inside out. In the end, the Earth would collapse on itself. But even after the Earth is wiped out, the resulting explosion from the impact of the two planets would send out huge fragments of molten rock that would hit the other planets in the solar system. The only thing left would be a new asteroid belt circling the sun, leaving behind no trace that a planet with intelligent life was once there. But what if Mercury didn't hit the Earth, but instead our planet was pushed out of its orbit and towards interstellar space? Nothing good. That's for certain. If our planet stopped revolving around the sun, it would do one of two things. It would either fall into the sun or we would fly off into interstellar space. If it fell into the sun, it would take just 65 days for the planet to crash into our yellow dwarf star. If we floated off into space farther from the sun, the earth would freeze over in approximately six months, the oceans would be covered in ice, and temperatures would be in the brisk minus is 200 degrees Celsius. Some humans might be able to survive far underground and utilize the Earth's geothermal energy, and somehow come up with a plan to leave the planet for good. However, there will be nowhere to go if Earth left its orbit. The other planets might also end up crashing into the sun or be flung out into space. Now, we don't want any of our viewers to be frightened by these models because the chances of these terrible things happening are very unlikely and at least down to 0% in our lifetime. It's not to say there isn't a chance of them happening because anything can make its way into our solar system from interstellar space. And at any time, like the Amamor object, which some scientists say is a huge splinter from a planet collision. In fact, Researchers have identified a star that's hurtling towards our solar system at around 52,000 km per hour, and it's currently about 64 light years away. The name of the star is Gliese 710, and it could do something entirely different other than change the orbit of Neptune, or cause Mercury to hit Earth, or even cause the Earth to take a spin into interstellar space. And now astronomers know exactly when it'll arrive, but there's no need to be frightened because it's 1.35 million years away. Now in cosmic terms, that's not very long. But if us humans are still on the planet during this time, we better hope that we've mastered interstellar space travel. Please, 710 won't hit the Earth, but instead it'll pass through the T-cloud and H-tons of icy comets and asteroids in our direction, along with millions of other smaller pieces of rocky and icy debris. The planet Earth would be pelted with these icy asteroids. As we said, all of this stuff isn't gonna happen for millions of years. But it doesn't mean that a star needs to wreck Neptune's orbit for any bad things to happen. It turns out that researchers have discovered that our solar system isn't as stable as once thought. We all know that Jupiter is like a shield for the inner planet taking hits from big asteroids and comets with its huge gravitational pull such as what happened when shoemaker levy 9 broke up and giant pieces of rock collided with the gas giant back in 1994 researchers have recently created two new computer simulations of a model of the solar system and the planets orbits as they are now when they fast forward both simulations a disturbing thing was found it turns out that jupiter's gravity could one day yank mercury out of its current orbit so now there are two ways that Mercury could end up hitting Earth or causing our planet to lose its orbit and fly out into space. And for those thinking that we could escape the chaos by fleeing to Mars, then think again. Even Mars wouldn't be safe in an unstable system. 
and in one simulation, Mars was ejected into the deep, dark, cold of interstellar space as well. But the good news is that we're all safer now. There's only a 1% chance that Mercury will move from its orbit before our Sun turns into a red giant, which would engulf Mercury, Venus and the Earth in about 5 billion years. However, it's difficult to predict what will happen to the solar system before this, during the course of a billion years. Even if Neptune was nudged a little, or Mercury being pulled from its orbit by Jupiter, it's not going to happen for at least a billion years. Many other things could happen during this time, such as Jupiter pulling a huge rock from the ERT cloud, like the dinosaur killer that hit the Earth some 65 million years ago and fling it towards our planet instead of protecting us from the impact. One thing is clear if the human species wants to colonize the solar system, we still have some time to become interstellar travelers and find new worlds to colonize. We hope you enjoyed this video, so make sure to subscribe to our channel for more content. Thank you, see you in the next one.